Good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry for the slight delay, uh, but we'll move it along uh, rapidly. Uh, I'd like to have a motion on the minutes. Can I move them? Second. Are there any questions? None. Okay. Do we have any public speakers? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. No public speakers. No public speakers. Okay. In that case, uh, I'll turn it over to Helena Williams. For, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll go. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Neil? Okay, we'll do... What's your name? <laughs> do I, I, what does it say on the plaque? I don't even know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he'll always be in our eyes. That's it. We love you. Thank you very much, sir. Well, this is a momentous day for me. Um, but before I begin, I want to make an introduction. Uh, it's a great honor for me to introduce the gentleman to my left, Joseph Smith, who is, uh, holds several titles. He is the um, Senior VP for uh, New York City Transit, uh, President of MTA Bus Company, and most recently President of uh, Long Island Bus. So he certainly has a significant workload, and he's here and uh, uh, to basically uh, pass the, I've been going to pass the baton to him, and um, I think in subsequent months Joe will be making this report. So I'll begin. This is my uh, report for the month of May. Uh, covers uh, data through March and the first quarter of 2008. Start with the status of operations, all our performance indicators, all of our operating statistics for well within acceptable ranges for the month. Uh, pullout performance in particular remained at 100% in March and also uh, remained at 100% for the first quarter of the year. Trips completed rate was at 99.2% for the quarter. Uh, mean distance between failures improved compared to 2007. However, it's still below target for the year, and um, I'm going to let Joe worry about that one. Okay. Um, and some good news with respect to our safety performance. Actually, some uh, really uh, excellent uh, numbers to report to you. Lost time injuries for the first quarter were 56% better than last year. Um, compared to our target for this year, after the first quarter, Long Island bus was basically on track, uh, maybe technically a little bit less than a percent uh, below our target. Uh, of note, though, was our customer injury rates uh, improved remarkably. Uh, the rate of 0.64 million excuse me, injuries per million customers is about 50% better than the goal and 31% better than the um, 2007 performance from last year's performance. You know, to put that into other terms, uh, that really means that we've had five customer injuries through the first quarter of the year and zero injuries. Uh, that was on our fixed route system, five on our fixed route system, and zero injuries on our paratransit system. That's a, a very uh, significant um, milestone. Questions on operations? If not, I'll move on to uh, financial performance. Generally, no significant issues with respect to our finances. Expenses for the first month of the year were 0.6% lower than the adopted budget. Unfavorable expenses included uh, fuel, which is about 18% above budget, and I guess that's well to be expected. Um, and workers' compensation was also about 18% above budget. This was offset by favorable variances and salaries and health costs about 10%, material and supply costs about, also about 10%, and maintenance contracts was 11% below budget. Uh, the cash balance was $1.7 million below budget, and uh, this, is, of course, is due to timing issues, and I don't anticipate that will represent an issue for Long Island bus. Questions on finances? Okay, I'll move on to uh, ridership and revenue. Um, I guess it's been well documented uh, just throughout the entire transit industry how r ridership has been uh, rising over the first quarter of the year. And that is very much true for Long Island Bus. For the month, ridership was 0.5% above the adopted budget, but 2.2% less than last year. Um, keep in mind, March 08 had one fewer weekday than last year, and each year I go through the annual explanation of the flip-flopping of the uh, Easter Passover holidays between April and March. So, you know, at the end of the day or the end of the year, it all balances out. So, uh, <coughs> nevertheless, the numbers are good. If you look at the average weekday, we're, we're up nearly a percent in March, which is uh, which is very good. So, for the first quarter, ridership is up 2.7 percent above budget compared to the first quarter of last year. This year, fixed route ridership was 3.6 percent higher, and in all, was 3.4 percent 
uh, able ride. Our paratransit system was 2.7 percent of our budget and 3.4 percent uh, higher than the same period last year. Questions on ridership? Okay, revenue. Revenue followed the same track as ridership, but total revenue was 3.2 percent above budget and 1.6 percent higher than last year. Um, unless there are questions, I'll move on. Yes, sir. Well, we got to keep in mind that hopefully, uh, as we talked about, we'll be able to get some of those uh, buses now and intermingle them when uh, when we have a little crisis, or even uh, some of the stuff that uh, uh, you're going to retire, but it's not they're still in excellent shape. So uh, we've talked about that, and Neil was on it, and we hope to ease our ridership problem, especially the standing and uh, the overcrowding, and that would help. Okay. okay. Or if they wanted to move to the train, I wouldn't mind that either right now. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a train man. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, work plan items. Uh, we have one first quarter um, inventory report. Uh, some really excellent results here. Inventory issues and receipts were in excess of the opening balance. I mean, this is indicative of the uh, number of parts we've been having to buy because of the utilization, high, high utilization of our equipment. Inventory buildup was less than 10% uh, uh, so far for the quarter, which is, I think, uh, within reason and certainly uh, within budget. Inventory turnover rate was 4.61. Um, this is well in excess of goal and uh, industry standards and, uh, and general practices. So I'm very, very pleased with the, the manner in which our inventory is being used. Questions on work plan? If not, I have action items. I have no action items, but I do have several procurements, and I'll move on to that. They're all, um, I have five procurements for approval, totaling 306000 uh, uh, Let's do the... Uh, They're the all non-competitive, non right? Oh, all, okay. Let's but I'm going to do them in two groups. Cause, you got um, Okay. okay. Um, well, th uh, the first three are uh, preferred source. Two are with the uh, New York State Industries for the Blind um, and are uh, all for a period of one year. One is for cleaning wipes and dispenser packs for 61000 or so. The second is cleaning wipes and jumbo rolls for 36000 um, and then I have a non-competitive public works contract. This is with New York State Industries for the Disabled. This is for groundskeeping and, and maintenance services at all our facilities in the amount of 57, almost $58,000. So, Are there any questions on that? Uh, this is one of the good things we do. Okay, one more. Once many. Uh, uh, you got one more? I got mo two more procurements. Yeah. Okay. okay. And these are uh, also two non-competitive miscellaneous service contracts. Both are for 75000 Both are for two years with a one-year option. One is with um, Cummins Power Systems. Uh, this is for non-warranty uh, repairs on our new uh, Cummins CNG engines. And the second is with Atlantic Detroit Diesel Allison. Uh, this is for non-warranty repairs. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't realize you're taking them all at once. Yeah, they said in two... Two step. Oh. Yeah. Two step. Oh. So sorry for okay, that's okay. It's okay. Okay. Right. So the last one again is with ADDA uh, for non warranty repairs on <coughs> transmissions. And uh, ask approval on all five procurements. Okay. Uh, a motion? Yeah. Yeah. I still move them. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, there's no questions, uh, but it's it's wonderful. This is one of the good things that we can do by uh, helping uh, not only the, the blind, the disabled, and those are the things we should try and outsource as much as we can to help those groups. It helps them, and it helps us. Well, sir, uh, with that, this concludes my 114th consecutive and final monthly report to uh, to this committee. Um, I, I don't know if that's a record. Um, I think Cal Ripken Jr. might be uh, envious of, uh, but I will not dance around the room and high five anyone. Um, let me just c continue uh, to say that during my tenure at Long Island Bus, um, I've served three chairmen and several committee members. I thank. I, Certainly want to thank all of them, but particularly this group. I always thought this one in particular was very, very sensitive um, to the needs of Long Island Bus, its customers, and, and even to myself. Um, 
So um, it's been a privilege to serve this committee, and um, if I have any regrets, and I don't have very few, um, there were two very important mitigating factors which totally offset that. One, I know uh, Long Island Bus will be in capable hands, certainly with my friend to the left, who I've gotten to know very well over the past uh, several weeks and months, and also uh, with you as well in the committee. Um, and the other thing is I'm very excited about my new position, and um, I want to thank Ms. Williams and our executive director for offering this to me, and I'm very, very happy to be joining an outstanding team of, uh, of friends at uh, Long Island Railroad. So thank you very much. Uh, 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 well, Neil, uh, first time I got a motion. in the years that I've been first. here, uh, I've, been, uh, it, it, I've enjoyed working with you, uh, and we're going to continue working together. Uh, for probably another seven years, that's the way it looks, and uh, all uh, <laughs> both of us, both of us, both of us, and uh, we want to wish you the best of luck on this uh, on this change. We'll certainly miss you at Long Island Bus, but Joe, congratulations and welcome aboard. Uh, you will. My committee and Helena will cooperate, and we have an added bonus that <clears throat> we can always call on you for some uh, uh, history, which is very important in, a in every area of, uh, of work. And what could I say except welcome and, uh, and welcome on both ends. And Neil, thank you again for your time. Pardon me, may I say something? I don't know if I've been here for all of the 114 meetings, but I know I've been there for most of them. And you are a pleasure. I don't want to say you've been a pleasure, because you continue to be a pleasure to work with. Congratulations. Good luck. You have my support. And may I ask, what is your new position? Um, the senior vice president of Wow. Actually, in my other life, my paying job, that's my position. So. <laughs> <laughs> So if you ever want to chat about anything. Okay, good luck, Neil. Thank you very much. I just wanted to add, um, Neil and I go back a long time uh, through many situations, many years in the legislature and uh, both kinds and everything. And, and um, you know, it's – Neil was put in a very difficult situation. Uh, we all know the history of Long Island Bus, its good points and its bad points, um, of which there are many. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, not of his doing, but of others. And, you know, we've been trying very hard to rectify that situation. Um, and while that situation has not been able to be rectified, Neil and his team have managed to make Long Island Bus a professional operation in the best terms of a mass transit system in this country uh, faced with tremendous hurdles uh, and needs. And, and, and that's the unfortunate part of it. And yet it continues to provide a significant benefit to the residents of Nassau County and some residents of Queens County and some residents of Suffolk County um, in that context. Um, so, you know, we want to, I want to thank you. I'm glad Helena has um, brought you on because you are a tremendous asset to the transportation system, not only of Long Island, but to the region. Um, so I can't say that we'll miss you. We'll just turn to you in a different fashion. Uh, we welcome your successor. Um, we hope that we'll have the same um, aspects of what it's necessary for the residents of Nassau County, the residents of Long Island, uh, who have unfortunately been placed in a situation not of their doing, but one which has to be solved. And we hope that um, in the forthcoming years we can do that. Uh, I believe combining the systems is a way to move that forward. Otherwise, I would not have supported it. Um, and I'm hopeful that in the end it will provide benefits to all of our residents in the region, and, and I think it will. Uh, and we welcome you, and we look forward to working with you. If I could uh, just quickly add, Neil, thank you for your dedicated service to Long Island Bus. I know the Long Island Railroad is gaining a good man. You're joining a great team, 
and we wish you all the luck in the world, and we know we'll, we'll work well together. I just want to convey also uh, from UTU General Chairman Anthony Simon and all of the labor leaders on Long Island that we look forward to working with you down the road, and we know we'll have a lot, a lot of good accomplishments down the road. So, and Joseph, best of luck to you and your new, new job as well. Neil, I hope you didn't tell Joe that I'm a pain, right? You didn't tell him that yet. He probably has that truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to jump in for the moment as well. Um, of course, uh, we're absolutely delighted to have Neil Yellen joining our staff. As many of you know, I've worked with Neil and, and just can't wait to have him on board. Uh, he's got a big plate in front of him as Senior VP of Administration, um, and we'll be moving forward on that agenda. I'm going to take a moment to thank Al Cosenza, who actually had um, an overload of items on his plate, and he managed them uh, beautifully uh, while I went through a little restructuring uh, at Long Island Railroad. Um, I turn to Joe Smith and say, you know, Joe, we're delighted to have you. Uh, you've got some big challenges ahead of you. Um, I don't want to emphasize just bus rail coordination uh, because I certainly remember my tenure at Long Island Bus. Anything we can do to help, um, we welcome it. Um, any opportunities uh, that you see for us to jump in um, and improve any type of coordination will be there. Uh, you have two people extremely knowledgeable, um, and yet you have my head of operations, uh, Ray Kenny, also uh, very focused on what we need to do with Long Island transportation. So good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're ready to move to our agenda. Uh, next on our agenda is Long Island Rail and Helena Williams. Okay, and first we'd ask you to approve the minutes. Uh, can I have a motion on the minutes? Second. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, any questions on the minutes? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Go ahead. And then we have um, one item on our, our work plan that I just want to call your attention to. It is on the Queen's interlocking, and we're going to do that when we have any information item uh, on the agenda. And at this point, we're going to uh, turn to our financial report, and that's Mark Young, CFO. Good morning. Um, uh, the financial and ridership report is in section two of the document. Um, if you recall, uh, we're reviewing for ridership purposes the uh, month end for March, which is a significant month for ridership because the first month post uh, fare increase. Um, what we saw actually was uh, ridership was up one percent over 2007 in the month of March 2008, which is as if you recall, is a, a lower, although it's still growth, it's a lower growth rate than we had been experiencing in prior months. Um, commutation was up only 0.2 percent, and non-commutation, but non-commutation was up 2.4. This is all compared to last March. So there are a few factors. Obviously, you have the fare increase that occurred on March 1. There was one less workday this year than there was last year. That could be an, a, a factor. The other large factors, of course, are gas prices that are very high, and employment re remains stable in the region despite, uh, despite uh, uh, some of the news in, in the downtown area of the city. So um, year to date through March, we were still up 5.3 percent over 2007 and still 2.4 percent uh, better than the budget estimates. What we thought we'd do, though, was since it is uh, mid-May, we try to accelerate our review of the April numbers because there's so much happening. And we do have some preliminary numbers for April, which uh, actually we had a tremendous rebound in April. Um, so uh, on the commutation side, while it was only up 0.2% in March, it was now up 9% <laughs> in April. Uh, and uh, non-commutation uh, actually uh, went slightly down in in, uh, in, in April. So, uh, but year to date, we're we're now up 5.2 percent compared to 2007, which is slightly better than where we were year to date uh, through March. So, 
I think what we're seeing is we've uh, gone through a, uh, a fair increase. Um, we have a sort of fragile economy, um, but we're still seeing, uh, when it all settles and the dust settles, we're still seeing growth that's better than last year at, uh, at this point. So I'd say we're still looking at these numbers very carefully. We're going to need to monitor them, particularly the economy. Uh, uh, but I think we're still strong, and what we are still strong versus budget on the, on the, the ridership side. Any question, questions on ridership? Okay, on finance, uh, uh, we're doing very well. Uh, revenues, uh, year to date on fares, we've collected, uh, this is through March, I'll go back to March figures since we don't have the uh, April finance numbers yet. Uh, we had collected $117 million in fare box revenue, which was $2.8 million better than the budget assumption, and 2.5% uh, uh, better uh, than we had budgeted. Uh, total year to date, we collected 164.7 million, which is about on budget, uh, and that's factoring some delays in reimbursables and capital project activity, which is not relative to, uh, not indicative of financial performance. On the expense side, we have a year to date $22 million favorable variance on expenses. That's a combination of factors, including um, some budgeted vacancies that have not been filled favorable health insurance and pension rates, as well as um, a few timing issues on the non-labor side, and the fact that uh, we had previously budgeted in our own budget the PeopleSoft implementation. As you know, that's now being taken over by the Business Service Center, so those funds won't be spent out of our budget and they'll be transferred to the BSC. Um, so overall, uh, finance uh, still looks good through the, the first few months. Uh, Mark and uh, Helena, service is our most important factor, and uh, vacancies that will help provide the continued good service should be filled, because if you weigh the balance of the overtime versus another individual, you have a fresh person, and you know when you work a long day, uh, it could affect you so uh, and also affect the pensions of, of everybody so you know uh, w we found in Nassau County that uh, it's better to hire and not uh, to do the overtime but we keep we must keep in mind that we have a budget problem and this is a major problem for all of us and uh, but I don't want that budget problem to interfere with the service of our riders. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You know, we continue to monitor all of our headcount efforts to make sure we stay on the uh, hiring plan that we've established that's extremely important because of the long lead times for training at uh, Long Island Railroad. Uh, we will continue to monitor, you know, ridership issues, um, especially as the prices at gas, you know, pumps continue to climb. You know, there's no question uh, that, you know, that pushes people to mass transit. Um, so we're monitoring it. Um, you know, clearly Mark's numbers indicate that notwithstanding a fare increase, um, you know, our ridership stayed strong. So with that, we're going to turn to um, our status of operations. Um, this is probably another key factor that I always promote um, for why people uh, come to mass transit, stay with mass transit, and, um, you know, will... Uh, will stay with Long Island Railroad. Uh, that's service reliability. Um, Ray has some terrific news on April. Uh, good morning. And the operating report starts on page number 29. And our overall on-time performance for April 2008 was 95.97%. And April's AM peak OTP was 98.35%. And that is a, uh, a record of more than 30 years. Our year-to-date OTP uh, at the end of April is 95.54. That is also a 30-year record. The year-to-date AM peak is 95.04, a 30-year record. And the year-to-date uh, off-peak is 95.96, which is also a 30-year record. Uh, during April, we had 11 100% rush hours. That includes five during the morning and six in the p.m. Uh, we were tracking even better up until April 25th. We had a disappointment where we had a uh, evening rush hour train sustain some damage en route to Jamaica, uh, and that incident is still under investigation. 
And another event of note is we had uh, Shea Stadium opening day on April 8th. Uh, we carried 9,790 passengers to Shea Stadium, uh, which is 18% of the total gate. And we accomplished that by operating 95.6% for the day. Okay, and I, are there any questions? You know, <laughs> that's the kind of thing we want to encourage, especially among the uh, Bronx, uh, the uh, Whitestone Expressway. <laughs> With the parking problem, too. And the parking problem as well. Yeah. And uh, if we can do any initiative advertising, we should keep that up because I think that's important that the people know. Uh, hand out things on the trains and so forth. Uh, and uh, in the same handout, <coughs> welcome, you know, summer starting. So we might want to do something along that way. Right. Yeah. So that, you know, uh, you know, people on the train, they'll read it, especially if it's, ha you know, if it's handed out. Of course, that makes more of a mess, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we the, good, the good overshadows the bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. the good overshadows this. Thank you, Ray. At this point, we're going to turn to uh, Chief Kathleen Finneran for our uh, MTA police report. Good morning. The crime report can be found on page 47 in the book. And if you look uh, for the month of April, we are showing a slight decrease in crime, reportable crimes, which we'll be working to keep that trend going. I'd also like to report briefly on um, an initiative that I had mentioned uh, approximately three months ago for our late night train patrols. Uh, we had been having issues of disorderly persons on board the train. Working with the train crews and transportation department, we started a program where we were meeting the trains in Penn Station. Uh, we had officers assigned to ride the trains. And additionally, we had officers meeting the trains at all the outlying stations to combat this problem. Uh, since our inception in February, I'm very happy to report that we've handled 20 cases on board these trains. We've written 18 criminal summonses for various violations and have effected seven arrests. And this is all being done while we're keeping in mind our on-time performance and we're keeping the trains moving and the train crews, more importantly, are feeling very, very secure on board these trains and we're going to keep this initiative going for a while. Thank you. Kathleen, uh, i got to compliment you. As, uh, as you know, in my riding around, I always see you at the station, and you're really on the job, and uh, we appreciate that here at the Long Island Railroad, and uh, keep up the good work. If I could also just jump in, uh, you know, Kathleen, we asked for your help. We had a couple of uh, trained personnel. You know, we had p conductors that were banged around a little bit in some of the incidents early on. And you, you supported us, you helped us, and it didn't go away. And that's the most important thing. The police presence has stayed, and the guys truly do feel, and girls, truly feel safer out there working the trains. And, and I think the message is being sent, uh, you know, to some of our younger customers who are kind of, uh, uh, you know, abusing their lifestyle a little bit on these late-night trains. But uh, they're learning that they're, they're going to be dealt with, and we thank you. We thank you for it. Very welcome, and as I said, we'll be keeping up the initiative. So. Uh, we are counting on just the point you made, Commissioner, um, and that is that word will get out and that everyone will know these trains have, you know, uh, details of uh, police patrols that uh, police are meeting people at stations so they can't evade um, contact with police if they are, uh, you know, acting in a rowdy manner, if they're acting in a, a you know, criminal manner, uh, we will in enforce um, safety on the train for both our crews and our customers. And that's what's key is getting that word out, letting people know there will be police there. Um, so we're counting on this program and uh, Kathleen's monitoring it, um, you know, every week. We talk about what happened on the weekend, in, in particular, on late night trains. So we'll stay with that. At this time, we're going to turn now. Sure. Uh, let me add to, to our safety and security about the trains, uh, as well as Metro North. Uh, we have our police ridership program, where the conductor knows that there's a police officer on board that is traveling from his home to his work either in New York City or Nassau County or Suffolk. And that's an added aid for our conductors where they can 
uh, call upon them if, God forbid, there's a problem. As you remember, the Colin Ferguson problem that we had. So uh, uh, I think, again, I reiterate how great that program is uh, because we had have additional security that no one knows. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to turn for our capital program report to Tom DiMaria. Good morning. The uh, capital program reports on pages 50 and 51 of your booklet. For April 2008, we have four projects with significant milestones and one information item. Our first project is our uh, maintenance away repair facility, and we awarded a construction contract uh, for a new repair facility to JTRAC. Uh, it's a subsidiary of Judd Lau Construction, which does a lot of transit work for approximately $10.5 million on April 30th. And these, uh, this new facility will enable the railroad to uh, maintain our on-track uh, maintenance equipment, uh, obviously a very important uh, a function to keep the system running. Our second project is uh, a Jamaica Central Control Building fit-out. Um, I've reported on this in the past. Currently, we fit out three floors for office space, and we're continuing to fit out that building, the remaining two floors in the basement, so that eventually we can move centralized train control uh, into the building. Um, and we have a design completion for the basement in the fourth floor. What that enables us to do is move our power uh, supervisory control system uh, into, the, into the building. Uh, we expect uh, the design to be complete and construction to start um, later next year uh, with beneficial use uh, to follow. A third project is escalator replacements at Merrick, Belmore, and Massapequa Park. We have a design start for those three escalators. We awarded a contract to Gannett Fleming uh, for $265,000 on April 18th. A design ex is expected to be complete next May 2009 with construction to follow and beneficial use in 2011 for the three new escalators. Uh, our last uh, project with significant milestone is Bayshore Pedestrian Overpass. This is a Long Island Railroad force account project. Uh, but we have a uh, manufacturer making the new bridge for us and a new overpass, and we awarded a contract for a little over a half a million dollars to Selco Manufacturing. Uh, also part of this project, Long Island Railroad Forces are going to renovate the south side shelter and a north side canopy lighting, and we're expecting beneficial use this November. Our last uh, item on the agenda is an information item. We're given a project update on the MTA uh, new central isolate police facility, and uh, yeah. we've we have the 100% design, uh, and we're reviewing that with the consultant, and we're looking to uh, complete that design in June and then follow with uh, procurement and construction. Um, I am going to pause for a moment on that project. Um, as you know, that was an MTA police project. Um, uh, Commissioner Pally asked us to um, start monitoring it and get involved in trying to push it along a little bit. Um, the design uh, did come in over the estimated cost. We are currently working with MTA police and Long Island Railroad um, Engineering to look at um, uh, ways in which the project either has to be adjust, adjusted or funding has to be added, we are m extremely committed to ensuring that we move this thing forward. Um, there's been a lot of uh, community concern that, you know, the place has been waiting for construction um, for a number of months, um, and they would like to see some action because, of course, all they have is a fenced-in area uh, ready for action. Um, so we'll be working on that, and we'll report to you next month on the results of that review to determine what adjustments need to be made. I'm also going to comment on Bayshore. Um, this is a project that is enjoying tremendous local support. Uh, the mayor is very committed to a downtown revitalization, revitalization program. We're working with him on um, what elements um, of the station enhancement, you know, benefit what they're trying to achieve. This is a perfect example of, you know, where they're trying to undertake some transit-oriented development, and we're trying to complement it with what we're doing. On, just on Bayshore for a second, the, the underpass is going to be closed. That's the intent. Good. <laughs> that will help by itself. Can I raise one other question? Um, just not, not on these two. Um, recently we've had, I guess, two grade crossing accidents. One in Kutchog, I believe, the other day. And there was one in, I think it was Beth Page or at Stewart Avenue. Um, and Obviously, there's only so much we can do short of eliminating the grade crossings, which, as we all know, is unfortunately cost prohibitive in many places. But um, could you just go over quickly 
what, because uh, I did see that there were some plans to expand our grade crossing awareness program, for lack of a better term, uh, um, in those two areas. Won't we, uh, uh, do you have a report on how many summonses were given uh, on those grade, uh, on all the grade crossings in Long Island? And Mitch, what we've been doing is we have the presence of the cars there. Yeah. I mean, we, we can't put a, uh, an officer no, I, there. Uh, it's a, it's an know. unfortunate, yeah, so, it's an unfortunate uh, meshing of two unfortunate situations, but yeah, when no, it happens, it happens, and not only does it it, 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 inconveniences, it inconveniences everybody. everybody is that's you know, the problem, yeah. and and sometimes leads to uh, injuries um, that are unfortunate. Also, Kathleen, if for, for a moment you could just pause and talk about our Operation Lifesaver. This is an initiative that we do um, immediately after we've had. Um, you know, uh, difficult consequences. Uh, this is, you know, clearly, um, you know, Stewart Avenue and Beth Page is one we are very focused on and doing an internal review. Um, Kathleen um, deployed uh, people immediately there. Okay, for the, uh, we also had East Rockaway um, at the same time. For East Rockaway and Beth Page, we have used Operation Lifesaver, which we go out as an educational thing at first, handing out pamphlets. Uh, advising people the dangers of going around the lowered railroad gates. The Kutchog one is not um, that type of case. In that case, the uh, gentleman slid on the road, went over through the gate, and then tried to back off and wasn't able to. Went through the gate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was based on road conditions due to weather. Um, so, And he had very minor injuries because he was able to. He started backing off and all, which was very, very good on his part. Um, but we do the Operation Lifesavers at the areas where people have gone around the lowered gates. We did both there. We also have deployed our highway unit and regular patrols to both of those crossings to do enforcement. I don't have the exact number, which I will have next month, but I know at Blanick Avenue at East Rockaway, one day last week, they issued 20 summonses. But I will bring all the numbers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's um, the educational, and I've, I've spoken with Joe Calderon. We're going to um, put ads out in that, ads or in, informational informa into the local newspapers because I feel that that's where the people will read it and pay more attention to it. Operation Lifesaver also goes into both our tracks program. I have two offices dedicated along with safety. They go into the schools, but I think we also have to reach out to the older people. Not just the children, we have to reach out to their parents. I did not get the impression in either of those two situations that they were young kids. They were at least, I mean, the cut, the cut charge situation sounds like it was an accident. Yes. But it was an accident waiting to happen, mm -hmm. and it happened. Um, you know, Stewart Avenue. Stewart Avenue and uh, East Rockaway were both um, more mature people, 40s and 50s. I'm... I'm glad I'm now considered more mature. Hopefully, I won't go around the gate <laughs> in that context. But, you know, I mean, it, sometimes you just do not understand why people do things. No. Okay? It's, it's like about it. you just don't understand it. No. You know, it's, it's the, gate, the gate's down for a reason. How is our signage at, uh, at these areas? Why don't we uh, come up with something for signage that might help us? Uh, okay. Okay, we, thank we you. We are actually uh, reviewing yeah. what yeah. else we can do. No, signage is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, no, if you had signage, you know. We're, we're, we are evaluating. In fact, at Stewart Avenue, we have additional signage. Yes. We actually have warning devices yeah. saying, you know, Don't, train yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, you raise a point that I always take the position, let's renew our look at it. Let's right. examine what is it that we can still do. Um, from a you know physical setting to communicate the dangers of grade crossing now, to anybody at the crossing. Mitch, don't go around the gate. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you're right, right, mature enough. You'll embarrass us. <laughs> um, at this time, we're going to turn to our uh, information item. This is the Queen's interlocking. There's a staff summary on page 53. 
Um, you've been briefed on the project last month, um, but I am taking another opportunity to share with you exactly what we are doing for public outreach for this uh, project. Um, I am absolutely committed to getting the word out as early and often as I can about this project so that we do not keep any of our uh, customers, uh, we don't catch them by surprise. Um, notwithstanding all of the outlets we use, um, you know, inevitably we will find some customers uh, that just haven't focused on it, but we are trying to do as much as we can to be out there in every way, shape, and form with a message. Um, I am going to take a moment and we're going to show you a, a video. This is our first time ever. We were asked to submit it to the uh, Cannes uh, Film Festival, but we declined because we wanted you to be the first to preview uh, this video. We're going to use this video in our waiting rooms at Penn Station, Hicksville, Babylon, Ronkonkoma, Huntington. We're going to have um, notice of the video on our message boards. Uh, we are going to put it on our MTA website and we're going to just Distribute it to all the media outlets. We are trying to do everything we can to make customers pay attention that they need to check the schedules uh, before they travel. Um, so with that, Mike, thank you for your help. Could the Queen's interlocking project will ultimately result in smoother, safer rides and greater reliability. The work will take place in a complex network of tracks and switches that serves the Hempstead, Port Jefferson, Oyster Bay, and Moncogma branches. Traditionally, crossing over this interlocking has been a bit of a bumpy ride, which you already know if your train travels down the main line. But all that will be a thing of the past soon, as longer and straighter high-speed switches will be installed to make train service more reliable. While we take the comfort of our customers very seriously, it's just the tip of the iceberg. You see, this new network of switches will be controlled using state-of-the-art technology. We are ushering out the old relay-based system which was state-of-the-art 70 years ago, in favor of a new microprocessor-based signal system, basically transforming from an operating system controlled by levers to one controlled by the click of a mouse. It's part of an overall effort to move towards centralized train control, replacing the traditional tower system. It'll all lead to fewer maintenance-related track outages and delays, which will make your ride smoother from a different perspective. Okay, so while the work is taking place, what effect will it have on my commute? Well, beginning Monday, June 16th, temporary schedule changes will be in effect so that we may complete this final project. These changes will include AM and PM peak train cancellations on the Hempstead, Port Jefferson, and Moncongoma branches. For reverse peak customers on the Hempstead branch, buses will replace train services.
I do have to note that the speaker in the video is Pete Palmero, and he's a Long Island Railroad employee. And I have to comment, he does these almost in one take. It's absolutely incredible. But we think that the more we get the word out there, the better benefit it will be to our customers. You're going to have these on the message boards at Penn also? Is that possible to do to show them or not? We're actually going to have the video on the waiting room video monitors, but the message board will reference, you know, we're going to have these schedule changes, you know, we're working on the Queens interlocking, and if you want to see a video, go to the waiting room. As well as our MTA website and all the media outlets, we're distributing it. Just quickly, as a conductor that has ended up on the laps of many commuters traveling through Queens, you know, this is a great thing. The manipulation of trains through Queens is going to be, that improvement is going to be, you know, the sacrifices that we make through this little transition are going to be a tremendous benefit down the road. And just being able to move trains smoother and quicker through that area, it will be a benefit down the road that the ridership will certainly appreciate, I'm sure. Thank you, Commissioner. He's referring to what we sometimes in-house refer to as the Bell Rose bump. There clearly is a bump in the track that, you know, angles out. Everybody feels it on that main line as the, you know, there's a side-to-side motion, you know, that can throw our employees and our customers. And what's really wonderful about this microprocessor system is while we're there, we'll straighten out the track. We think that that will result in less noise, less vibration, and less overnight maintenance, which is a benefit, you know, to the surrounding neighbors along the right-of-way. So thank you very much. With that, we're going to turn now to our final item on the agenda, the procurements. There are nine procurement actions included in this month's package, totaling $12.8 million. There are four items in the non-competitive section, and that's for a total of $10.8 million. They include just one item I want to particularly point out to you. We are moving forward with a five-year agreement with Oracle. This, again, is consistent with the MTA's approach where they asked us to, they asked all the agencies to develop a more streamlined approach and uniform systems for integrated budgeting and financial reporting. Oracle is the MTA's licensee, and we are moving forward to consolidate our activities as well and have a financial system that we can rely on. That will be the implementation of Hyperion planning module. Oracle bought out Hyperion. And with that, we ask for a vote on these non-competitive procurements. There are all, oh, I'm sorry. I'll let you vote. Let's do the non-competitive first. Are there any questions on non-competitive? I looked over them. I don't see anything. Mitch? Okay. Everyone's good? All in favor? Aye. Aye. There are five items in the competitive section, totaling $2 million, and we ask for your vote on those competitive items. So moved. Second. Anyone have any questions? Mitch, on the competitive? I mean, that's really cut and dry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And there are no ratifications on this month's agenda. I will note that we've included our inventory report, and we work hard to try to maintain those inventory levels that should be pegged in our budget. One of the areas that I do want to comment on that will be one of Neil Yellen's first initiatives, along with Mark Young, and in coordination with Metro North, we are looking at what we can do to be more aggressive in our procurement strategies in terms of buying with Metro North, controlling inventories, and try to utilize our buying power in the industry. And that really concludes this month's report. Okay. Before we adjourn, is there any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. A motion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you all next month.